we saw yesterday that Jesus' call to repent and believe to be part of the kingdom of God is a very disruptive and demanding call. It is one that requires your whole life. One that means a life not of self-rule, but of Christ rule. It is a call for your allegiance that leads to a whole life of discipleship. But wonderfully, the life of a disciple is one of incredible privilege. Privileges that come from our strong link to Jesus Christ. The privilege of being able to come close to God. The privilege of becoming clean forever in God's sight. The privilege of relationship and fellowship with the great God of compassion and love. Allegiance is a strong word, isn't it? But it's the right one. And that is because of the strength of the Christian's connection with their Saviour and God. And so as I thought a bit more on the blessings that allegiance to Christ brings, a couple of verses that we have covered recently in the evening sermon series in 2 Corinthians came to mind. As Paul writes to the Corinthians, he highlights again and again the close link between the spiritual state of the Corinthian church and Paul's own joy. It seems that Paul's close allegiance to Christ produces a close allegiance to God's people. So close that in 2 Corinthians 7 verses 5 to 7, Paul says this. For when we came into Macedonia, we had no rest, but we were harassed at every turn. Conflicts on the outside, fears within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus. And not only by his coming, but also by the comfort you had given him. He told us about your longing for me, your deep sorrow, your ardent concern for me, so that my joy was greater than ever. Paul's on a missionary journey. He's determined to proclaim Jesus Christ so that many, many more people will give Christ their allegiance to but yet he finds himself in a spiritual, emotional and, and psychological position that many of us are battling through. He is downcast. He is depressed. There are conflicts around him. There are fears within him and they leave him very low. But then God comforted him. How? Did he miraculously lift his spirits? Did he miraculously make his soul feel less burdened in response to prayer? Well, no. God comforted Paul through his friend and fellow Christian Titus coming to see him. Now, that alone brought Paul comfort. But what brought even more comfort, what increased Paul's joy so much, so that it was greater than ever, it was hearing how the Corinthians looked after Titus as well. And also hearing how the, ty the Christians in Corinth felt about Paul. I love these three verses very much. They highlight to me just how important it is to know that your church family are on your side. That your church family are concerned for you. Um, that they pray for you. That they love you because they belong to Jesus just like you. These verses help to explain to me why a simple phone call um, or an appearance on Zoom from one of the church family, um, a knock at the door and a socially distanced conversation, why these things can have such a positive impact on our day and why they can make us so much more grateful to God. You see, allegiance to Christ with all the disruption and all the demands that it brings it brings the far greater privilege of close fellowship with God and with his people. And the more we realise this and the more we act upon it, then, like Paul, the greater our joy will be. Amen.